Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 And I felt his feet to worship him And he said unto me, see thou do it not And that was what? That was uh, John the Revelator He was um, worshipping an angel But the angel told him and said See thou do it not Meaning don't do it It says, I am thy fellow servant And thy brethren They have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Okay because the angel was basically saying I'm your fellow co-worker I'm also your brother as well I have the testimony of Yahweh Shai just like you do Worship the Most High For the testimony of Yahweh Shai Is the spirit of prophecy And that's the spirit that uh, The hopeful elect is going to move in They're going to move in the spirit of uh, prophecy man That's why um, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai That's what you're seeing all across the, the globe man Sorry, one second So the testimony of Yahweh Hashem what is the spirit of, uh, of prophecy man Which the word prophecy means what? It means to say before It means to say something before it actually happens because this bible this book called the bible right everything that's written inside the book it either has happened or will happen in all the english terminology you know right, it must come to pass or will come to pass or has come to pass and right now we're in um the scenery of the unenlightened but in as much as we're in the scenery of the unenlightened there's a specific group of individuals that the Most High has enlightened to know about the correct understanding of the scriptures and the book of Amos goes into that man Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says surely the Lord God will do nothing for he revealeth his secret Unto his servants the prophets And the Most High reveals His secrets Unto his servants the prophets Understanding allegories Literal speech Figurative speech Understanding of similitudes Dark sayings Different kind of um, Symbolic meanings inside the Bible And literal meanings And this is all revealed to the prophets of the Lord all right? The scriptures are like uh, Ancient scrolls That have a glimpse of the future Because Originally You have what? You have the Dead Sea Scrolls And those Dead Sea Scrolls that you see Those are Writings are written in um, Ancient Paleo-Hebrew because that was the language that we were speaking originally But the energy of this system that we see Is a left hand energy now It's a satanic energy that's being given out And the reason why it's a, it's a left hand energy Is because even the language itself, English You read it from left to right But in Hebrew, well how do you read it? You use your brain and read it from right to left so anyways That's the spirit that we're moving in man Because this is a warfare that we're in This is not no game This is not no joke This is serious significant business The Heavenly Father is about to Tackle this place Any moment from now The Most High is about to sweep this place very soon very soon the Lord is about to remove the plug from the matrix Where all your shops are going to be shut down There's going to be no food to eat People are just going to be shitting and stinking on the ground man Because that's all that's coming man, death and destruction Alright And that's the anthem man That Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy America The Israelites are, the elect of Israel is going to be saved and slavery for the Edomites and the other nations, man. That's the song that we're singing. That's that new song. 
And that new song that's being sung is being sung by the 144,000. No man could know that song. So anyways, let's go to Amos chapter 8, reading at verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. The Heavenly Father is coming to bring scarcity to His Word, man. People are not going to gain access to hear this Gospel. It's going to be really hard to hear this Gospel, man. To hear this Gospel in the end times, it's going to be the scarcity, it's going to be as the scarcity of winning the lottery, close to none. Because people are going to be thirsting for this message this message people are going to be thirsting for it they're going to be wondering what exactly is happening inside the world but only the hopeful elect are able to decipher what's inside this scriptures it says and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east and that's what happened um when uh, the lockdown happened, all the Bible shops, the shelves were empty. Everyone was just taking books from the shelves, trying to discover what exactly is happening inside society. All right? And it's going to be too late because you're going to have some people out there, they're going to try and go to the book of Revelation and be like, oh, the world is coming to an end. Let, it's, too, it's too late to read uh, the book of Genesis. So I might as well just go to the end of the book and read about Revelation. Alright? And it's going to be so bad out here that people are going to try, they're going to start cursing the Most High. Let's read it, man. And funny enough, it tells us that in the book of Revelation, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 22, reading at verse 3. And there shall be... Oh, Salah. My bad. Uh, I believe it's somewhere in Revelation. Let's get it. Revelation chapter 16, reading at verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. And eat every stone about the weight of a talent. And men, men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. The kind of impeccable pain that the Heavenly Father is about to inflict on people is going to be excruciating. Right? You're gonna, you're gonna wish that you gave up the ghost, because the kind of pain that the heavenly Father is about to inflict on on Godly, is gonna be out of this world. Undescribable pain is gonna be inflicted on the ungodly, and that's why we're warning um, those that of a sincere heart that will hearken to repent, for the kingdom of Yahweh Shimei Alshai is at hand. But the Heavenly Father said, well, Yahweh Shai said, many are called, but few are chosen. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of people are called, but not a lot are going to be picked. And that's the reason why we have to really meditate and understand what we've got in ourselves involved into. Because when you come to serve the Most High, prepare your soul for what for temptation it tells you that in the book of Sirach the second chapter in the first verse so when you come to serve the most high you have to get yourself ready because now all the demons and the unclean spirits they want to see you fail this, this is a real spiritual warfare this is not a joke this is a serious serious spiritual warfare 
we're fighting against demons, principalities, powers, witches, warlocks, necromancers, satanists, all manner of uh, uh, um, wicked people, man. Because that's all that you see in England a lot of the time. You see a lot of witches and wizards, man. I remember the time when I was in a, I was in London Bridge one time, and there was a witch that was doing a, the Baphomet symbol and the Freemason symbol. And all I was doing was speaking the Lashawan Kodash. And her legs started to shake, and she ran to a man. Okay? Because when you have the Racha Kodash, the Holy Spirit, all right? No evil can touch you. Her legs were literally shaking, man, as if she was feeling fire. The Racha Kodash Ash, the Holy Spirit fire. And what did the Most High say? He said, I will make the, the, your mouth like fire. So Babylon is getting that uh, spiritual fire and then it's going to receive that physical fire. All right. So let's go straight into it because right now, as you can see in society, everyone is um, living their life. Some people are walking, uh, living their lives. Some people are driving buses. You see a couple of red cars. People are uh, going to work and stuff like that and driving their cars and living their life. But little to what they know is that there's going to be a time where in order for you to drive that bus or for you to drive that car, you're going to have to take a microchip in your hand or in your head, man. Because very soon, there's going to be a time where the military is going to conquer the country. And the only way for you and the only way for you to gain access to maneuver inside society is if you take a chip inside your hand or inside your brain. And we know that devil Elon Musk, he's working hard on the Neuralink brain chip. If you do your research on the Neuralink brain chip, the first ever Neuralink uh, clients, allegedly the Neuralink brain chip malfunctions. Because I remember he was using his mind to control the cursor on the monitor screen, on a computer. He was playing chess. Well, guess what? The Heavenly Father has preserved a remnant that will not bow down to the knee of Baal. Okay? This is the book of uh, Romans, chapter 1. Reading at verse for but what saith the answer of God unto him I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal because the image of Baal what happened during the time of um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they went uh, um, told to bow down to a golden image and they were like, I'm not going to bow down to no image. You know what? Let, let's, get, let's get straight into it. Man. Let's, let's go into that story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Right. You know, let's go straight into it, man. Let's read it. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 3, reading at verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits it's funny because when you think about three score cubits and six cubits that number three is in there and the number six is in there what's the number of the beast 303 score and six 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 three score cubits right you, how many digits does triple six have three Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits remember the number of the beast has what three digits and the breadth thereof six cubits and you know the number of the beast is what is six 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 now I'm not saying that the mark of the beast is in is in um 
the book of Daniel, but I'm just trying to correlate it to the upcoming of what's happening. He set it up in the plain of Dora, the prominence of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king set to, to gather together the princes, the judges and the captains, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Right? And what's going to happen during the end times, man? During that end times that we're entering into, there's going to be a time where the government is going to create policies. And those policies are going to be like an alarm to the society. And that alarm that's going to be ringing to the society, right? They're going to tell people to take a chip in order to buy and sell. And that's what's soon coming to a place near you. Now you might think that we sound like a broken record. Hey, let me sound like a broken record out here, man. Let me sound like a broken record because at the end of the day, even though I sound like a broken record, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna to come to pass. I remember the Most High uh, said, uh, speaking to the ears of my people, the words of God. And that's the word that's being given to the nation of Israel, the word of prophecy, man. So let's carry on reading Daniel chapter uh, 3, reading at verse uh, 3. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the treasurers, so the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provenance were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornets, flutes, harp, sackbuts, full stream, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king have set up. And that was during the Babylonian Empire. All right, but in this present empire that we live in, there's going to be policies that's going to be brought forth where if you refuse to what? To follow, to take the mark of the beast, there's going to be a consequence. And we're going to read into it, it says, And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery, fiery furnace. So, in the, in the Babylonian Empire, they said, if you don't take... Um, if you don't bow down to that golden image, what's going to happen? You're going to be uh, put inside a fiery furnace. You're going to burn. All right. So keep that in mind, right? We're, we're reading Daniel chapter 3 and verse 6. We're going to hold Daniel chapter 3 verse 6 and we're going to go to Revelation 13 and we're going to correlate that. Okay, we're going to correlate that. So hold Daniel, 3 verse, uh, Daniel chapter 3 verse 6 in your mind. Now we're going to uh, Revelation 13. Reading at verse 15. Remember Daniel chapter 3. Revelation chapter 13, reading at verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And notice I suppose it an image of the beast. We know during the time of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, that image was um, a physical image. But the image that John the Revelator is referring to what is an infrastructure and this image we know that that golden calf was uh, was physically carved just like a potter right a potter needs to uh, potter the clay he needs to put his hands together to make a vase or to make a pot and this image of the beast can mold your mind into thinking a certain way. This image of the beast is the system, but the system molds you into a mindset. You know, oh, I think uh, taking a vaccine is a good idea. Or I'm gonna vote for the, the uh, Republicans. Now I'm gonna vote for the Democrats. Now I'm gonna vote for, um, you know, I'm gonna vote for uh, conservative. I'm gonna vote for Labour. Okay.
So, at the end of the day, what does that show you? It shows you that when it comes to it, right, you got to understand that um, these times are soon coming. These times are soon coming where it's going to be serious, man. So reading on, Revelation 13 verse 15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What's that referring to? That's referring to, um, you know, the image of the beast should be killed, right? So that's talking about those that don't worship the system. What's going to happen? They're going to be killed. Those that refuse to uh, comply to the system, they're going to be killed. And that's the same thing that um, Nebuchadnezzar did say, if you don't worship that image, you're going to be killed. Okay? And he calls them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So this beast is basically copying the same strategy of, uh, of Nebuchadnezzar's. You know, nothing new is under the sun. This beast is copying the same strategy of Nebuchadnezzar's. That's where they get their ideas from. All right, so you can see how this beast has gotten its ideas from it. Go ahead from um, Nebuchadnezzar because when you meditate on that golden image that Daniel saw in the dream, this system always copies um, different empires. Just like when you look at the $1 bill, you see a pyramid. And that pyramid that you see, right? That pyramid that you see, that pyramid it goes back to the Egyptians. So hey, it's getting, it's getting real serious now, man. Because it soon comes, it says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, save he means unless. So unless you have the mark, that's the only way you can survive in the system. But obviously, there's gonna be some men that are going to uh, survive these evil times. had the mark or the number of, or the name of the beast or the number of his name right so that's soon what's coming so hey it's gonna be so that's why we have to really keep our minds focused man we really gotta keep our minds aware and conscious of what exactly is going on you know that's why you got uh, these devils they're looking see that see you so you know they're watching <laughs> you got agents out there man but hey man all these agents that you see they can't stop the prophecy that's gonna take place okay because you have agents out there that are watching and these agents that are out there watching right what is, what is how, how much I say say you could do nothing against the truth but for the truth that means that you can try your best, but you can't stop this truth. This truth will always come to pass. You can't stop the truth. You know, that's why, you know, we don't worry about this world, man. Because there's only so much that the so-called white man can do. And that's why we say that the so-called white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. The man of sin. That wicked one, man. Okay? And there's going to be a time where he is going to go into captivity according to the King James Version Bible. Okay? And that's what's coming for the so-called white man, man. He's going to go into slavery according to the King James Version Bible, man. For all the evils and atrocities that he's done to the 12 tribes of Israel, man. Okay? Revelation chapter 13, reading at verse 9, says, If any man have an ear, then hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. He is the patience and the faith of the saints. 
And that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting to see the enslavement of those that have uh, 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 harmed the 12 tribes. The slavery is soon coming. How do you think the, the, you know, when you hear about the golden floors and the palaces, and you hear about um, all the beautiful things that is going to happen in the kingdom, you know, where do you think that comes from? It's still the opposite direction, you see, you've got these agents out there, man. <laughs> in these opposite directions, you see. But yeah, now going back to the point in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, reading at verse 7. Therefore, at the same time, when all people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackcloth, posture, all kinds of music, all the people, the nations and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Yeah? So everyone complied, man. And that's what's going to happen when the chip comes out. People are going to comply to the chip. When the chip comes out, people are going to comply to it. They're going to submit to it because they're scared of um, their provisions being taken away. Because it was so easy to vaccinate people. All the government had to say was, listen, you're not going to travel. And look how many people were taking the jab. So when it comes to the, the chip, it's going to be an easy thing. Now, you, you, no, 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 uh, no chip, no travel, man. No chip, no car. No chip, no house. No chip, no money. No chip, no freedom. But guess what? There's going to be some men that are going to have freedom. They're going to have that standard lifted up for them, man. Okay? Wherefore, at this time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, psychopolstry, and Docema and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshippeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a fire of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the provenance of Babylon, Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Yeah, and that, that um, chip, what is it? Is it is an image which is what? Which is basically um, an idol. And there's going to be certain men that are not going to bow down to that chip. They're not going to bow down to, that, uh, to this system, to the image of the beast. All right? Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is, not, is it true, O Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do, ye serve, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at the time that ye sound, hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, cyber palstry, and the soma, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that power that shall deliver you out of my hands? So yeah, the consequence is going to be those that refuse to take the um, chip, they're going to be put to death, man. That's all that's coming, bro. All that's coming is all hell that's going to break loose. E great evils is coming upon the land, man. And people can't say that they haven't been warned. They've been warned, man. They've been told what's coming. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashim and Shai, you know, evil is coming. You've got this Elamite out here that's been standing here for hours, man. <laughs> you got Esau out there but guess but guess what the scripture says man the scripture says um 
let me stand like this <laughs> real quick. That you see, you see, you see him right there, standing there. He's been standing like that for hours. You've got these agents that are watching, man. So anyone say that there's no agents, you must be out of your fucking mind, man. There's agents, man. He's been standing there for like two hours. Or is it like 30 minutes? And he's moving again. You see what I'm saying? You're right, you, you look uh, very confused, man. <laughs> That's Esau, man. And he's gonna stand there again. You see? But this is an evident token of perdition for this devil, man. This is the book of uh, Philippians, chapter 1, reading at verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. So this represents what? The, the, the destruction of Esau Edom. This represents what? The destruction of Esau, the so-called white man. That's what it represents. You know, when you see, you know, men out there wearing the e-pods, it represents what? The fool of the so-called white man. It represents the fool of him, man. Okay? Because ultimately, you're gonna have those that are gonna overcome the chip, man. Yeah, certain brothers might be beheaded, but you're, you're gonna have brothers that are gonna receive that spiritual power. Yeah, how wish I think some of you standing will not taste of death until you see the Son of Man return. It's not gonna be like a, a previous time, man. And he's still hiding in that corner. It's not gonna be like previous time, man. The most high is coming to bring a standard lifted up, man. So that this devil can taste this, have a taste of his own medicine, man. And that standard is gonna shock these devils because no matter how much they plot and plan, the most high is gonna manifest uh, 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 his power. And that power that's going to be seen is, is going to be the Edomites' worst nightmare, man. Because the Most High is going to um, give power to Jacob, because this kingdom is certified to go down. Because when we read it, the second edge of the Second Ezra 6 and 9, right? This is the book of Second Ezra chapter 6, right? You know, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it, their follower. Jacob is represents that new world, man. Jacob is the beginning of it, their follower. Jacob represents the Israelites, which are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Esau represents what? Represents the so-called white man. Okay. And what's going to happen, right, is that the kingdom is going to be given to what? To the saints of the Most High. And who are the saints of the Most High? The saints of the Most High are the Israelites. They're going to inherit the kingdom. This is Daniel chapter 7, reading at verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. I the saints of the Most High are going to inherit the kingdom forever, even forever and ever, man. The like Iwalumium, the saints of Yahweh Shimei al Shai, are going to inherit the kingdom. That's what the Most High is coming to do because at the end of the day, hey man, let's look crazy for the Lord. Because at the end of the day, even if people look at you crazy, hey man, they're gonna look crazy when those ships come. When when the Lord uh, starts beaming people up, people are gonna look crazy, man. 
Because right now they look at us crazy, but it's cool. Let us look crazy. Because even though we look crazy to this world, we will look glorious in the world to come. Even though we're rejected by this world, we'll be low will and accepted by the world to come. And that's why what we're professing you how we're shy to the world, man. We're professing you how we're shy confidently to the world, man. In the chief place of our concourse, man. Professing Yahweh Shai Mashiach, saying that he's the king of kings and lord of lords, man, and telling the Israelites, the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand because this place is going to be destroyed by missiles, man. Missiles is coming to sweep this place. Great judgment is coming. Great genocide, man. Great death and destruction, man. Okay? Great evil is coming upon this land, man. The Most High is coming to bring great evil upon this place. All right? World War Three is coming. All right? Race riots are coming, man. All hell is about to break loose. And whether people hear, whether people forbear, okay, the message still has to come to pass, man. And that's how we're gonna get. We're gonna get the judgment of the world, man. All right, beginning with the Israelites, but also the world is gonna get their judgment. Isaiah chapter 13, read the verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil. All right, the Most High is gonna punish the world for their evil, for transgenderism, for robosexuality, for homosexuality, for uh, 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 um all this wickedness that's on the earth man for wickerism for all the evil that's infecting the earth all these wicked rappers like a uh, sexy red cardi b Nicki minaj uh kendrick lamar i don't like that 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 too man okay and i will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible all right? The Lord is going to lay low the holiness of the terrible, man. You Israelites, man. And the Edomites, too. Behaving in a terrible manner. The Most High is coming to judge. He's coming to bring judgment, man. Okay? That's what Yahweh Hashim Yahweh is coming to do because this present world is going, man. Let people of the world enjoy their time. Let them enjoy you know, their the, 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 uh, means of enjoying that. Because there's going to be a time where the Most High is coming to bring judgment upon this place. So let the world enjoy their time. Okay? Because judgment is coming upon the world, man. Isaiah 13 verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man in the golden wedge of Ophir. A man's value is going to increase, man, because all these men that call themselves men, when this shit goes down, they're going to be pissing their pants. They're not real men. Because when the economy collapses, right, and, and this place goes down, it's really going to tell you who a real man is, man. And it's gonna take the, it's not just um, for someone to stand in that time, you're gonna need the Racha Kodash. You're gonna need the Holy Spirit. The Most High is gonna put the spirit of courage on you to endure these evil times that are coming. To endure these terrible times that is coming upon the land, okay? To endure these evil times, man. Okay, and we're telling these devils in their faces that the Most High is coming to bring judgment, man. We ain't afraid of no one, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashim Shai, the Most High has put the spirit of courage, man. And Lord willing, at that end time, the Most High continues to put the spirit of courage. Okay, because when the pressure comes, you know the Lord will put a spirit on you where you'll be able to overcome the pressure. It's not gonna be by your own will. 
you know when you're on the news well which brothers have already been on the news but on a higher volume you know when that you know pressure comes the most high will put a spirit on you where you'll be resilient to uh the pressure Yahweh Hashim Yahushai will give you the strength to overcome all you need to do is put your trust in him that's all you need to do put your trust in Yahweh Hashim Yahushai that's all you need to do and everything else let him take control man just put your trust in the Lord that's pretty much the main thing fear Yahweh and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man so all we're meant to do is put our trust in the Most High and the Most High will do his job. Okay. We ain't worried about this economy, man. Because we know this economy is some bullshit. I ain't worried about none of these people, man. Okay. All I need to do is put my trust in the Most High and that's all that matters. Everything else is irrelevant to my life because these earthly affairs and worldly affairs don't mean nothing now because at the end of the day the evils that's coming upon this land is going to be serious all right the most high is coming to bring severe pain upon the land man and people are like oh yeah here we go again we've heard it over and over you're going to hear it over and over and over, man. You're going to hear the message over and over so much to the point where you ain't going to believe it, man. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, reading at verse 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Yeah, Yahweh Shai is coming to bring his angels and his angels are gonna return with these ships, man. And these ships are gonna start shooting laser beams on people, man. These ships are gonna start disintegrating the people of the world, man, okay? And this is what is gonna save the 12 tribes of Israel during the time of salvation. The dead in Shai will rise first, meaning that those that were martyrs inside the faith will be beamed up inside the ship those that um that they are alive will be beamed up caught up together with those in the cloud man. cloud referring to what the world calls a, a, a so-called ufo and this is what's coming to save the israelites okay because they call it the rapture okay but that rapture is some bullshit man because Really, what's going to happen to the Israelites is that they're going to get caught up into the air, man. The angels are going to come and they're going to take them up in, into the air, beamed up. But when, when the missiles come, the missiles are going to explode this place. All, all, all these buildings that you see are going to be leveled down, man. And the Lord is going to send these angels to escape that destruction that's coming. Alright? Verse 6. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of Yahweh that rendereth recompense to his enemies. The heavenly father has enemies, man. You can read that in the book of Psalms chapter 83. Psalms 83 gives you a list of enemies that the heavenly father has. And one of the most highest chief of enemies is Amalek, man. Amalek, which are the so-called Jewish people, man. That is one of the Most High's chief enemies. Okay? And the Most High said that he will have war with them from generation to generation. Okay? Because anytime, um, well, that's, that's why I said that um, you celebrities shouldn't get involved in this war, man. Okay? Because we saw what happened to Kanye West. Kanye West, uh, that the real Jews are the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. What happened? He lost a, a, a billion dollars, man. 21 Savage said he's getting money like a Jew. He had to apologize. Kyrie Ivan posted up a video saying that so-called Negroes are Jews. He had to apologize, man. But we ain't in no contract with no devils, man. We didn't carry a pen 
and sign a document paper with these damn devils, man. So we're standing in the right position to curse these devils out, man, and tell them that they're gonna receive slavery. We didn't do no contract with these demons, man. Okay? Because that's what Jake does. Jake will sell out. Jake will, um, you right? Jake will, uh, will sign these documents, signed to uh, Sony Records or, uh, or, 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 or um, Virgin Records. Yeah. You know, you got Usain Bolt wearing a dress. Okay, Kevin Hart wearing a dress. Because they're sellouts, man. We don't need to do that shit because at the end of the day, you know, we hold integrity. Because I want to crush these enemies, man. I want to crush them. I want to tread upon their neck. I'm telling you. Hey, man, and that's what's soon happening, bro. We're going to tread upon their neck. Yeah? We're going to tread upon our enemies, man. Don't worry about all that, man. Yeah? We're going to tread on the neck of our enemies. Yeah, this is uh, Baruch chapter 4, reading at verse 25. It says, My children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thy enemy hath persecuted thee. Who's our enemy? Esau Edom, man. The Ishmaelites, the Moabites. The Amalekites, the Hamites, man, they persecute us, man. But surely thou shalt tread upon his neck. We're going to tread upon Esau's neck, man. We're going to have the space, the space trade, man. <laughs> and thou shalt, show, but surely thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. And that's also referring to our people as well. You know, because two thirds of Israel are enemies. And these Edomites, they're enemies too. We're going to tread upon their neck during that time. We're going to tread upon their neck, man. And when we tread upon their neck, it's going to be serious, man. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock full of the enemies. Yeah, because we left the land of Israel. We left the land of Israel. Now we're dispersed in uh, different regions of the world. Be of good comfort, all my children, and cry unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. That's what we're doing right now. We're crying to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We're crying to the Most High, begging Him for, for, for mercy, begging Him for the kingdom, begging Him for, for Him to uh, deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. For ye shall be remembered of Him that brought these things upon you. You're right, you good, yeah? The Most High brought these things upon us, man. You know? The Most High brought these things. And guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen is, um, as these things are brought upon us, the Most High is going to remove these uh, things that were put upon us. Those curses are going to be put upon our enemies. You can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 7. Right? For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, seek him ten times more. And that's what we're doing. We're seeking how about Shimmy Al Shai ten times more. That's what we're doing. We're seeking the most high ten times more. That's what we're doing in these last days, man. We're, we're putting our trust in how about Shimmy Al Shai more, more, and more. We're increasing our faith in the most high, man. Okay. Because it's not going to be good for the wicked, man. Right? It's going to be horrible. All right? This is uh, 
Isaiah 13, read number 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. All right, that's the Russians. The Most High is putting the spirit on Vladimir Putin, man. Just like he did during the time of uh, Pharaoh. He put the spirit on Pharaoh and hardened his heart. He's putting the spirit on Vladimir Putin, man, to send those threats. You know? Well, Vladimir Putin said America is an enemy of Russia, man. And the Most High is going to put the spirit on these political leaders to uh, destroy themselves, man. Because when the missiles come, people are going to be running asking for help. They're going to be running asking for help. But Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is going to... You know, the angels are altering the minds of these leaders to go against themselves. It says, Which shall not regard silver, and as for their gold, they shall not delight in it. You can't bribe Russia, man. Russia is not going to accept your money. They're not going to accept your bribery, man. And ultimately, uh, uh, Russia is not part of the beast. Russia is that bear. And the bear is not part of the beast. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. Alright? The bow, the, 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 the modern day bow, what is, is a missile, man. These missiles are going to dash people into pieces. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Alright, they're going to have these robots that are going to be killing people, man. They're not going to have pity on you even if you're pregnant. Their eyes shall not spare children. These robots are going to start killing children. These drones, these AI robots, these cyborgs. Alright, they're going to start killing people, man. Because, hey, it's gonna be um, like uh, that movie, uh, I Robot. I, I remember I watched that movie, I Robot. Um, the robots were saying there's a curfew in effect. You know? You're preaching to brother, you know? brother. You know you're an Israelite. Eh? You know you're an Israelite. That's the case. Everybody should be an Israelite, isn't it? Not everybody. Why? How you know I'm an Israelite? Because I can tell through your spirit, man. Eh? Cause, cause I can tell through your spirit. Now, I, I don't know exactly where, where you from. Where you from, bro? Are you from Jamaica? Mm. Yeah, the Jamaicans are Israelites, man. Huh? Uh, yeah, but it's interesting you say that. I, o I always okay. like to know why, like say you say. Oh, because the curses. You know the Bible, yeah, mm -hmm. it says that the Israelites, right? The, let me let me read it. To you. Let me read it. To you. Right? I read my Bible. Yeah, but you know the book of Deuteronomy goes into detail on. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You know the curses. Because you know the reason why we're in this situation, black people are at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Because we disobeyed God's commandments. Mm -hmm. We disobeyed the Most High's instruction. Because we didn't listen to God's instruction, that's why we're in this situation. That's why we're in the slums, we're in the ghettos. Now I'm not saying that some of us aren't successful. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. some of us that have a lot of money, but as a whole, as a whole... Well, what from, from what I read from the Bible, it, it shows more than, it shows from the time that the serpent yeah, mm -hmm. approached Adam and Eve, or approached Eve, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and told her not to eat of the fruit. Yeah. That, I, well, he told her to eat the fruit because she said, he said that. Do not die. Yeah. And yeah. you'll be like God, knowing good and bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So disobedience started all in it. Yeah, disobedience, and, and, and of yes, course. And yes, and some, it, it would seem like uh -huh. black people are first. Yeah. Yeah. But God is not impartial, is it? Of course. When you, when, you, when you study the Bible, it shows why we're in this condition. It's basically, it's, it's the Satan started, you know, it's rebellion. I don't think Satan, Satan because the Bible doesn't say Satan rebelled against God. Well, if he, well, if he, if he tried to influence Eve, God gave a command. So, if he, if he disobeyed due to what Satan told her, then he, then he, he Well, you know, Satan, Satan, yeah, is there to prove to God who we really are. So, so he, he's there to tempt you well, it, it, to show it, it, to the most high. It could seem like, it could yeah. seem like that because he tested Job. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. And he tested him. But, but remember, God made Satan enough. But when he made him, he didn't make him as a Satan. Satan, right? Mm -hmm. Satan saw what God had, what he had produced, and he started to pray. No, no, Satan, Satan doesn't pray what the most high uh, likes. Satan is just a, uh, he's a servant of God just on the left hand side. So God has a balance. He has the, the, the holy angels, mm. which are his uh, servants for, for, um, on the right hand, 
He has the demon guy serving from the left hand. What so would be the balance? Well, so then, but if you think about it, what would be the purpose of God having, say, someone like Satan on the back? The purpose of God having Satan is to prove. So if the Most High wants to test someone and see what yeah. they really like, he'll say, oh, Satan, go down there and uh, test this person and show me who they really That's are. That's one way of looking at it, that's yeah. Because yeah. remember, um, say, uh, the Most High said, have you seen my servant Job? That's right. And then he was like, um, basically saying he has a lot of faith, he believes in me. And Satan was like, oh, yeah, but um, I'm he only, sure. He only, be, he only have it because of what you can give him. Give to him, exactly. And then yeah. basically what happened was that Satan was taking away all the stuff that he had. Yeah. And what happened, after he got tested and proved to be a faithful servant, yeah. the Most High blessed him even more That's of right. the amount. That's so right. Satan is just used to test you. And once you overcome the testing of Satan, the Most High will bless you even more. Yeah. But even though right, he, he created black and white, okay, right. Uh, well, so obviously we're not black because you're not black. No. You, you're, you're a variation of brown. Yeah, yeah. No well, one I'm is white. Say, yeah, well, I'm, I know that. Of you course, know, of even, course. Even I have people who are your yeah. complexion. Of course, I mean, you of check course. Check their grandma's parents. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Because I've got a friend. Yeah, she's mixed race. Yeah. Her dad yeah. was black, black, darker uh -huh. than you, and uh -huh. her mother was white. Yeah. They produced her and her sister, mixed race. She married a black guy. Her children are black. But you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of so, mixing going so, on. So sometimes, even when we say but we're black, we yeah. use that term to differentiate us because that's the term that's used. But we're all intermingled somehow. Yeah, because like let's say for, if a mixed race person, which is an Israelite, was to go with a white woman, mm. their child will look very lighter skin, very white color. Yeah. But that's still an Israelite. So there's there's so much mixing going on to the point where this is not even. But you know, you mentioned about Israelite. Yeah. Didn't Israelite come from um, not Isaac? Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. So Jacob wrestled with the angel. That's right. And his name got changed from uh, from Jacob to, to Israel. Israel. That's right. So yeah. So how do we? When you say we are Israelite. Yeah. Are you saying that we come from? We're descendants the, of the, uh, we're descendants of Jacob. But obviously. Um, the real Israel will repent. The real Israel will follow the most. See, God used Israel to represent him as a nation to represent him. But even then, they denied the Christ. So, but the thing is that that's why, um, obviously, we're not justified by the law, but we have to keep the laws, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're not meant to eat shrimp, pork, lobster, all that seafood, like crab. Mm. You understand? Um, we're not meant to go bold, like completely bold, like shave your head completely bold. Really? Yeah, we're not allowed to where, save where, where, where would you say you get that? Where that come from? He said that in the Leviticus, not to save the, um, for, for the head, to be like both completely both, you know? Because Which you, you have heads, fine. Yeah, you know? but remember, even when Jesus was on earth, yeah. he had to, sometimes he had to rebuke scribes and Pharisees. Of course. Who were religious, so called religious. Of course, men, of course. Because they had their own interpretation of, of the course. law, Ten Commandments, and additionally. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, where we get some of these reasoning from? Yeah. Is it really the Of course, of course, we're never justified by the law. Yeah. But uh, Yahweh Shai, which the world eagerly calls him Jesus Christ, but I call him Yahweh Shai. Um, he, he came not to uh, abolish the law, but to fulfill. That's right. So he came to make sure that the law is basically fulfilled. So he's not, he's not, he, he said, think not I come to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill. That's right. Yeah. So obviously we're not justified by the law, but the law is, is um, it's not made for, uh, it's, it's good. Yeah. The law is beneficial. So what do you believe in then? What do you okay, so what I believe in is, I believe, yeah, that the Most High, his name is Yahweh, which means he exists. I believe his son's name, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, his real name is Yahweh Shai. Yeah. And yeah. I believe that Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he only died for the Israelites. But what about the rest of the people? He didn't die for any, anybody else, but only but, his but people. Would, wouldn't that be impartial, impartiality on God's side? Well, who, who did that? Um, remember, said God created all of us. You know? So why, course, why would he uh -huh. favor some and not all? Because God made an agreement with only one nation, which are the Israelites. He only made uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, but in the, Mount the, Sinai. The, but the agreement was, was it that through their line of descent that Jesus would come? Well, remember, the Most High uh, made an agreement with the 12 tribes. That's why when you read uh, Hebrews um, 8 and 8, yeah. who is the new covenant for? 
Who do you think the new Coleman is for? Let's read it, yeah? Yeah. For finding fault with them, so the most I found fault with the Israelites. He said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So, covenant just means agreement. That's right. So, the yeah. Most High is only making a new agreement with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So does that mean that, they, they, does that, mean that the Most High got it wrong? No, the Most High, well, obviously the Most High knew all of this was going to happen. Yeah, but, what's, but so that's like he pre predetermined that things were going to happen. Of course, everything was predetermined that everything that, that would happen. Don't, that don't but you know, right, but, you, but you know why he pre everything is designed like this. So, um, if everything was all good, we wouldn't appreciate good as much. But if things were good and yeah, then they went a, bad, to, to a point, but we would appreciate good more because of the experience of evil. I see that form of reasoning. I see that form of reasoning. But if we, you know, know what God is, who God is, and what you know, God is love and all that. If he, well, he, if also, he, he, he also he, he also creates good and evil. God is love, but he also creates good and evil. He can love. He loved Moses, but he didn't allow I, Moses to I, enter I the promised land. I don't know if he creates evil. Let me. Oh, maybe, no, let's, no, maybe. If I would say that evil and good exist. So it's for you to choose which one but is for you. This is what the Bible says. It says Isaiah 45 and 17. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create what evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Careful. Because, because, funny enough, I was looking at something today that's talking about the Bible. Has the Bible been changed? Over the years, some of it has been changed. Even the guy at work asked me that question. Some of it has been changed. So, so, why did they change certain parts? Sometimes the wording is being changed, but the meaning is the same. I, I would say so, the Bible was altered to some extent. Like, yeah. you had books in the Bible, like, um, First Maccabees, second Maccabees. Right. So the reason why I mentioned that Dino. is because that you say it's, you said that it says that God created evil. Yeah, He does. Because okay, who created Satan? Who created Satan? Yeah. God created with freedom of choice. So yeah. not to do what was bad. Just like how when He created Adam and Eve, created them perfect, male and female, and He said, "This is good." But He doesn't predetermine or tell them. He said, "He says to them, look, if you do this." That will be good for you. But if you do that, that will be bad for you. Choose good and you will benefit. But what Satan, right? He, he, uh, he, was the, he was programmed to do evil. By God? Of course, he was chosen. He was chosen as a spirit to yeah. do evil as the angels were chosen to do the uh, I, to do righteousness. I've, I've agreed with a lot of what you said, but that part I don't agree. I don't think of, God, co of course. Because if, if that's the case, then then God really wouldn't have any right to tell us what to do if he created evil. That's not reasonable. He did. The Bible has told us that the Most High creates good and evil. So the Most High creates good and evil. And we just have to deal with it, you know? And also, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Satan, he was, um, the Messiah actually made him. And, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah but, but he didn't make him like Huh? It's, like, it's like, why, why do you think we, if, if you choose to do something which is bad, mm -hmm. whose fault is that? Is it God's? If I choose to do something bad, of course it's my fault. Right, so why not the same with when he created the devil? He didn't choose, make him to do that, No, but, but but in the eyes of the Most High, Satan is doing the right thing in the sense of, um, he's doing what he was designed to do. We, we were not meant to transgress the law. Satan was, was designed to be evil. We, 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 we're not uh, designed to be evil. We're meant to keep the laws of the Most High. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a different way of looking at it. You're here all the time? Uh, yeah, I'm here yeah. a couple of times. I'm off work today, but anyway. I can give you my YouTube page if you want. What, what's your YouTube page? Uh, Soldiers of your house, Shaq. Listen, take care, man. Repent, man. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, yeah. Hey man, that's what we're doing. We're telling our people to repent for the kingdom of Yahweh Shimia Shimei Al Shai is at hand. Okay? That's what we're doing in these last days, man. Telling Israel to repent, man, for the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Alright? So, yeah, so that chip is still coming, man. And society is, is going to get bad, man. That's why we got to fight, man, because these demons. 
they're out there trying to, to uh, they're out there fighting us, so we have to fight back. We're fighting against devilish spirits, principalities, powers, so we gotta pray. We gotta uh, try our best to pray. We gotta try our best to fast. We gotta try our best to improve more. We gotta try our best to uh, uh, become stronger in, in, in Yahweh Shai and keep on believing because evil times are coming man and we don't want to be um caught lucky we want to carry on having faith in your house so we gotta revelation because your house is coming to fight man Second Ezra 13 verse 3 And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven I, Yahweh Shai is coming back with innumerable amount of angels He's coming with an uh, uncountable amount of angels And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him When Yahweh Shai was hovering on that ship, that father ship that was gigantically enormous you know, these nations, when they, when they looked up in the sky, they were trembling, they were scared, man. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. Yeah, so, you know, when um, Yahweh Shai, you know, uses that ship to emit a uh, laser, it's, it's going to uh, disintegrate, you know, these uh, people, man. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of the four winds of, of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. Because remember, during World War III, Yahweh Shai is going to return the midst of that, man. Yahawashai is going to return and he's going to fight and conquer us. We're going to have these nations fighting each other in World War III. But then Yahawashai is going to return and Yahawashai is going to win World War III. Not the Chinese, okay? Not the Japanese. Yahawashai is coming to win World War III. And after that beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But when, but I beheld and lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. Yahweh Shai was uh, uh, on that ship and that ship, he was uh, moving that ship, right? But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was and I could not. And after this I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet does fight. Yeah, they were scared to fight our Lord Yahweh Shai, but they had to still fight, man, but they're going to lose. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hands, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests yeah man that ship emits that spaceship that Yahweh Shai is on emits uh, 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 unexplainable uh, uh, laser man and that laser is very very painful and that laser is what's gonna um, burn people man that's what's gonna start burning people because that's what the Lord is uh, coming to do. The Lord is coming to um, bring uh, a serious amount of uh, judgment upon uh, the lands. And hey man, these ships are gonna start shooting laser beams and disintegrating uh, people on the earth. You know, you watch that movie, uh, War of the Worlds. You know, War of the Worlds, uh, the sh you know that those ships were just uh, launching out rays 
and we're turning people into dust. They got that from the scriptures. When you read uh, 2nd Ezra 16 and 11, it reads, it says, um, the Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beings of powder at his presence. The Lord is gonna shoot lasers and turn people into powder as prayers so that, that's what the Lord is coming to do the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power and also you go have these elites they're going to be hiding um, underground because they're trying to escape the uh, judgment of the Lord. But hey, even if they try to escape, you know, the Lord is going to deliberately allow them to uh, hide in those bunkers so that they can be enslaved, man. Because there's going to be a world domination by the Israelites, man. The Israelites are coming to conquer the earth. The 12 tribes of Israel are coming to conquer this planet, man. And that's all that's coming. The Most High is going to send the 12 tribes to conquer this earth man okay and not only is he going to send the 12 tribes to conquer this earth what's going to happen right is that it's going to be a, a global domination world domination from the 12 tribes of israel okay because the israelites are the real police you know because the word police it goes if you go to the etymology dictionary it means a law enforcer and who was chosen to give the law let's read that in Romans chapter 9 Romans chapter 9 reading that verse 3 for I could wish that myself were cursed from how shy for my brethren my kids were born to flesh who are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the confidence and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises so the Israelites are designed to uh, give um, the law right? the Lord chose the Israelites to give the law not the abominations so hey it's coming let's read Isaiah chapter 13 Isaiah chapter 4 reading that verse uh, 5 it says and Yahweh will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. In the kingdom, you're going to have a ship hovering over your heads. Okay, you're going to have a ship hovering over your head, man. And that ship that's hovering over your head, right, is going to be up there just to show that you serve the Lord, man. That ship that's gonna be there, right? It's gonna, it's gonna show you that the Lord has chosen you, that you're, you're the Lord's chosen, and all nations are gonna know who the twelve, who the real Israelites are, man. And they're gonna respect us as a nation, because right now we're being disrespected by the Gentiles. But there's gonna be a time where respect is gonna take place. They're gonna start respecting the uh, Israelites man we're actually gonna have an order because one thing that Israel lacks is order man Israel lacks order Israel lacks um, having structure there's no structure in Israel right now everything is dysfunctional and disorganized right, but in the kingdom we're gonna have um, things set up right you ain't gonna have um, our women dressing up modestly wearing bikinis and tight skirts and, and leggings they're going to be dressing up in modest apparel our men are not going to be uh, gangsters wearing ski masks and stabbing each other and doing all manner of folly okay everything is going to be put back in order man because you have these uh, musicians that these Jewish so-called Jewish people are putting in, uh, in uh, the media to destroy black so-called black people you are rappers like a uh, Sexy Red, her agenda is to cause so-called black uh, children to be dysfunctional. You have women like Cardi B that are designed to indoctrinate um, these children. OK? 
okay? They're indoctrinating these children, man, in these last times, man. And that's what we're seeing in these days, man. We're seeing people getting infected by them. So, hey, so that's the reason why we need the kingdom, man. We need the kingdom of Yahweh Hashim Yahushua. Because at the end of the day, this shit can't continue, man. There's no way this nonsense can continue forever. So the Lord is coming to um, is coming to bring order now, man. Because the dysfunctional um, behavior is getting out of hand. So now the Lord is coming to bring order. Beginning with the Israelite man and then the Israelite woman. Because order begins with the men. It begins with the man coming back to his power which is Yahweh Shimei Hashem and then all that can take place but when things are dysfunctional what starts to happen? things start to get out of balance you see? because you Israelite man you're meant to be serving your God you're meant to be serving the Most High and if you don't serve Yahweh Shimei Hashem the Most High Yahweh in the name of his son Yahweh Shai, you're in some serious trouble Israelite man so you better come back to the Most High and repent because if you don't repent and come back to the Lord hey man, if you end up like that you will taste the missiles man and that's why Yahushai said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand Yahushai's kingdom is coming okay and that's why what is the same Proverbs chapter 1 Proverbs chapter 1 reading at verse 20 wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the streets alright says her wisdom uttereth her voice in the streets because Yahweh Shai he was um, on the streets uh, preaching even our Paul and other the apostles are preaching on the streets. We're not only just on the street, in the synagogues as well. And you could just meet someone and interact with them and teach the Bible. It doesn't only have to just be on the streets. Okay? She crieth in the chief place of concourse. Right? In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you love simplicity. You love being simple. You know, when you tell Jake, oh, he's a slave, Jake is like, oh, I ain't no slave. I can travel anywhere I want to go. I'm not a slave. Yes, you are a slave, man. Because so far as you have a national insurance number, a birth certificate, you are a slave. You know, when, when a, a ship touches the water, the first time it lands on water, it has a, 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 a birth certificate. As soon as you enter inside the system, they give you a birth certificate showing that you are a slave. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you refuse. The Most High Yahweh. Is calling you Israelites to repent but you're like no we don't want the Most High's words we don't want to listen to the Most High the Most High is called but you have refused I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded the Heavenly Father stretched out his hands and no one regarded no one wanted to listen but ye have set a note all my counsel and would none of my reproof yeah the Lord you know has told you but you have refused man you have refused to listen to Yahweh Shimei Hashem you have refused to listen to the Lord you right? and because you have refused to listen to the Lord that's the reason why you know you're going through hell that's the reason why you're going through the situation that you're going through because <laughs> You don't want to listen to um, the Lord, man. You understand? So, 
at the end of the day, that's the reason why um, we're meant to, you know, really um, focus on getting ourselves right with the Most High because if you don't get yourself right with the Lord, it's going to be a, a terrible uh, circumstance. That's why it's, it's, it's important to, um, to repent because if you don't repent, it's, it's going to be a bad situation. And that's the reason why um, it's time to repent and to get ourselves right with the Most High, man. Okay? Because the Most High is coming to bring an order, man. Okay? Proverbs 1, verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. The Most High said he's going to laugh when you're suffering. When you're, when you're hungry. When your stomach is rumbling. When you're very, very hungry, the Lord is going to laugh at you what? At your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. And when your fears come, the Lord going to be mocking you, man. Why is that? When your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when your distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. All right? A lot of people are going to try to come back to the Most High, but they're not going to find the Most High, man. Okay? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. You know, you hated knowledge, man. When someone was telling you to repent, you were like, no, nah, I don't want to repent, man. I want to carry on being a nigger. I want to carry on smoking weed. I want to carry on uh, 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 doing wickedness. Okay, you hated knowledge. You hated understanding how the Most High operates. What the Most High is pleased on and what the Most High dislikes. You hated knowledge, man. But they would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. You despise the Most High's counsel. You despise the Most High uh, uh, giving you uh, advice. You despise listening to the Heavenly Father. You are cho choosing the ways of this world instead of choosing uh, the Most High. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own ways. Meaning, hey man, the same way, you know, you put your, 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 your trust in your hands, in the same way your hands are going to deliver you in that time and we know in that time your hands cannot deliver you and be filled with your own devices you know that that job that you put your trust in you know that atheist mindset that agnostic mindset right it's going to satisfy you in the time of trouble because we know that's not what's going to help you in that time from the turning away of the sinful shall slay them, and prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. The Most High said that. Right? But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. I mean, if you listen to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, you will dwell safely. When you listen to the Most High. You will dwell safely. You will avoid danger. You will avoid the evils to come. But if you don't listen to the Most High, you're going to be in a, a, a terrible situation. Okay? And shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Alright? When evil times come, the Most High is going to protect you. You know, you might see people dying, but you're surviving. Why is that? You're gonna be like, wow, I just saw, I just saw 300 people dead on the floor. I'm alive. The Most High is gonna protect you, man. He'll protect you from getting killed. He'll protect you from those evil things to come. And when the Lord protects you from those evil things to come, you're going to start praising the Most High, man. I'm telling you, man. It's so worth it. Has anyone ever put their trust in the Most High and been confounded? No. Okay. 
There's no one in the Bible that's put their full trust in the Most High and been confounded. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 19 I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying that's in the kingdom the voice of weeping is not going to be there anymore okay are you going to be rejoicing when the Lord put that hedge on you man you're going to be like wow call on the other shimmy on share or the most, the most high percent uh, birds to give you food, man. Just like Elijah. Don't be surprised when you see animals give you food. Don't be surprised. The Lord, the Lord can send uh, animals to, uh, to feed you, man. You know, I had a dream that a fox gave me uh, bread, man. A loaf of bread. <laughs> you know? Remember I had a dream one time, a fox had a uh, bread in his mouth and he was giving it to me. You see? The Lord can send animals to feed you. You know? The Most High can send squirrels to give you grapes. The Lord can send the, the, the birds to give you um to give you uh food, man. It's all possible. Through your heart shimmy I'll share. All things are possible. Through the most high. All things are possible, man. That's why all you have to do is put your trust in the Lord, man. And once you put your trust in the Most High, hey, man, the Most High will protect you, man. Okay. Isaiah 65 verse 20, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the children shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Yeah, in the kingdom, you have a palace. You have a massive palace. You have many children. You have children, so many children in the kingdom. You know, you can go to different uh, galaxies or dimensions or different realms. You know, when you enter your chariot, or you can just teleport there. You know, we're going to be living like uh, gods on the earth. Because that's what the Lord uh, designed uh, the nation of Israel to be. He designed Israel to be gods. So that's what the Hawa Shimei is going to do. The Most High is going to uh, give uh, power to his elect. We're going to be put on a high status, man. The Most High is going to put Israel on, on a high level. We're going to be primordials and primordials. We're going to be uh, everlasting if we're part of the elect. Infinite life. Infinite life, unending life. And right, the elect are going to have glorified bodies. Celestial bodies. Bodies that never get tired. Bodies that don't get weak, bodies that don't get uh, wrinkles or spots, bodies that are celestial, bodies that are able to fly, bodies that are able to, you, you're able to go into the water without a swimming suit. The Lord is going to give you a powerful body, man. And that body is going to be powerful, I'm telling you. So all you got to do is put your trust in the Most High and keep his commandments it's not a hard thing man the bible is not complex Yahweh said my yoke is easy it's not hard so don't try and make it complicated for yourself just keep on putting your trust in Yahweh Shimei Al Shai and trust me man you're going to see the Lord is about to do a great work man the Lord is about to do miracles the Lord is about to do things that uh, even when you do it you're going to be like, whoa, I didn't know the Lord could use me to do that. Hey, the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Shai is about to do some amazing things. Hey, let's let's prove it. Let's prove it, right? Isaiah chapter 55, reading at verse 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. 
and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Lord said his words is not going to go void. Okay? What does that mean? That all the words that he said has to come to pass. And there was a statement that Yahweh Shai made in John 14, reading at verse uh, 2, he said, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I right, what's those mansions, planets, galaxies? I right, asked the Lord's mansions, you're right? You seem interested. Okay? So it says, the Lord said, my father's house are many mansions, man. Those mansions are galaxies, planets. All right, that's what the Lord is dealing with, man. But I wanted to go into uh, another precept, really to uh, go into detail on um, what I really meant. Um, I remember that precept again that I was going into um you know oh yeah I remember I just remember that's the spirit I remember it all right the Lord said uh the works that I do you shall do also and greater works man Matthew chapter 23 reading that verse 5 it says that's a lot John chapter 14, reading at verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So the Lord said that the works that he does, right, the elect are going to do greater works than those, man. Okay? And not only are they going to do greater works, let's read what, there's an important thing that Yahweh Shai said. Let's read it. Because there's many things that Yahweh Shai did. John chapter 14, reading verse uh, 25. And there are many, also many other things which Yahweh Shai did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the words itself could not contain the books that should be written on month. So if the Lord said that the works that he does, right, the elect are going to do greater works and also the same works. And it says the works that Yahweh Shai did, uh, 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 the earth cannot even contain it. That means that um, the elect are literally going to do things out of this world. Man. They're going to be doing amazing things. You believe in the Bible? You believe? Right? You believe in the King James Bible? Uh, I read them all uh, today, sir. Okay. What's your What's your religion? Uh, I'm a Christian. Oh, you're a Christian. Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus Christ. Yeah. What color is uh, so-called uh, Jesus Christ? What color is the Messiah? What? So I have a limit barrier, you know, a line barrier. That's why. Okay. But what What color is the Messiah? Well, it's all, all colours. All colours? Do you mind if you be on camera? Sorry? Do you mind being on camera? No. Okay, so you said that the Messiah is all colours. Well, let's read what the Bible says, right? Let's read what the King James Bible says. The Bible says, right, in Revelation uh, 1 and 14 says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. So which race of people have woolly hair? Well, that was when he was uh, risen. That was when no, he was because, risen. no, because when you read the Bible, it says, He that have seen me have seen the Father. And we know that when you read Daniel chapter 7, it tells you the Ancient of Days has a uh, hair like the pure wool. So this was referring to him on the scene on the earth. It was. Oh, well, I'm not going to argue with it. Uh, verse 57, uh, okay, so hang on a second. Let me ask you a, a, a scientific question, right? What color was Adam and Eve? I, I wasn't there at the time. Okay, but you know, scientifically proven, right? Recessive genes cannot produce dominant genes. Genetically, it's impossible for recessive genes to produce dominant genes. So using logic, it will only rationally make sense that Adam was a dark skinned man. 
No, it's not probably, it's, it's factual. It doesn't really matter. It does matter. If, if someone wants to rob you and take money from your bank account, right? Or someone wants to steal money from your pocket, if you went to the police and said it doesn't matter, I'm sure the police would be scratching their head saying, well, what do you want me to do? Huh? No, it's, 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 very, it's very relevant. The important thing is that we know our sins are forgiven. But the Messiah only died for one nation of people. He didn't die for everybody. He did. He didn't die for everyone. He died only for the Israelites. No, he died for the he died for the world. He didn't, every human being. He didn't die for every human being. Yes, he Let's read it. Jo Acts chapter 5 verse 31 says, Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So the Bible says he's given repentance to Israel you, and forgiveness you, you of you sins. You need to read the whole Bible. I, I read the whole Bible. And then you, you get it in the right context. No, I am giving it in the right context. Anyway, the Messiah no. only died for his people. He didn't die for everyone. Okay. okay. So he died for you. He died. Yeah, he died for me, and he died for uh, the Israelites. Did he died for me. He died for you. Yes, but well, I'm a Gentile. If if you're an Edomite, then that means he didn't die for you, man. Yes. If you are Edomite, that means he didn't die for you, because you're calling yourself a, a Gentile. I am a Gentile. So you are. So are you? Are you Edomite? No, I want to know so. You, you don't believe you're Edomite? No. Do you believe the... Um, well, I'm a Gentile, as opposed to a Jewish person. Okay, so that means that the Messiah didn't die for you if, if, you're, if you're calling yourself a Gentile then. He died for every human being. He didn't being. die for every human being. He only died for okay. the Israelites, which are the so-called black people, okay. Hispanic people, Native Americans, the Israelite foreigners. I'm sorry, you got it wrong. I got it right. Because the Bible says that he only died for the 12 tribes of Israel. And he heaven has 12 gates for the 12 tribes okay you know Yahweh Shai only died for the 12 tribes of Israel he didn't die for everyone why do you okay? have to do this here? I, I can't here. do it here no I live here man I don't want to listen to you okay but you know, no one's stopping you yeah? no I'm standing here no just go because the Lord there's a field me. it's a big fucking the, the Lord field over me. there you can do your thing I'm not disturbing you it's my house okay. I live here what? I work all day and I do not want to listen okay. to the noise so, that you're coming out with. I'm not making no noise. You stand in no a field somewhere. You can go somewhere else. You stand in a field and I'm then here. no one can listen to you apart from no, your two followers. No, don't touch my camera. Leave it here. Oh, no I'll, one is I'll disturbing I'll do more than touch it. I'll slam it across the tree. Stand, stand, stand across go the somewhere tree. else. Should I slam my finger across the tree and see then? <laughs> you don't want to fuck with me. Just you don't want to mess with me. Then fuck off somewhere else Because I'm minding my business. You see, this is the devil that the Bible speaks. This is Esau Edom. I'm out here preaching the word normally, and he comes here the and devil. says that he's gonna gonna uh, 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 smash devil. my phone for what? Yeah, you are, man. You're behaving like a deceiver in terms of your character. Okay. Your behavior is Would behaving you, like that. As the devil, can I ask you politely to go somewhere else? Well, I'm just gonna move here. So that's it. Done. You don't own the. You, you don't own why, here. Why don't you go across the road? So at the end of the day, that's pretty much it. Well, you see, see you later. So I'm saying, man, if you dare to touch my phone, yeah, trust me, bro. It's going, it's going. Yeah, listen, man. I, I know karate, bro. So if, if, you, if you try me, listen, I'm a spiritual guy, man. I'm a spiritual guy, but if you want to mess around with me, it's, 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 it's game time, man. I'm putting my shit back, man. <laughs> Put my shit back. <laughs> you know. End of the day, you know you got the devil that the Bible speaks of East of Edom. You know that wants to uh, be around and, and be a nuisance, man. Okay. That's why you how about shimmy outside, right? You're gonna start dealing with these peons, man. But this is what this is what the men of the how about shimmy outside have to go through, man. This is what the men of the how about shimmy outside have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. No one is making noise or anything like that. He's coming out there looking for trouble, man. Okay? I'm a peaceful guy, man. Don't, don't press. Don't press. Me, man. Okay? Because there's many, you know, when he goes into the door, do you think he can hear? And he, I'm sure he lives in, in the up floor. 
being damn devil the Bible speaks of, man. In terms of his actions, behaving like a deceiver. Because he's being deceptive. Okay? So yeah, man. This is uh, Psalms chapter 140, reading at verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Okay? So at the end of the day, you know, trust me, man. <laughs> preserve us from the violent man which is Esau Edom you know because this thing was here and he's trying to um, look for trouble if he was to take it calmly listen I'm a peaceful guy but if you try to smash my phone that's why your, your head gonna be smashed man I don't think it's a fucking joke man you know I'm a cool guy man I don't look for no one's trouble so no one should look for my trouble man Okay? And that's why these devils are going going in slavery, man. For 1,000 years, man. I promise you, man. If I'm part of the elect, man, it's going to be hell for these devils, man. It's going to be complete hell. Hell. Pray, pray that I'm not part of the elect, man. Because you either might better pray that I'm not part of the elect. Because if I am, bro, it's going to be living hell for you devils. It's going to be hell. It's going to be horrible. Horrible. It's going to be horrible, man. Horrible. I'm telling you, man. That's what your how about Shimmy Al Shai is going to bring, man. To you peons, man. You're going to play in games, man. You're going to see, man. The most High is going to show his power. Your how about Shimmy Al Shai is going to manifest his power, man. Okay. speech not in knowledge you know anyways with that we're gonna give all praise on and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Hamashiach Wam Lak Yahweh Shai okay yeah man I'm a patient guy I'm very you know kind but if someone says they want to chuck my phone and look for my trouble that's when um I have to defend myself so anyways on to the next one Shalom